Good morning and welcome to Advent Mornings Together. Uh, it's a time where we try together to encounter God, to engage Him soul to soul, spirit to spirit. Uh, we ask God to awaken us, to quicken uh, our spirits that we would be able to discern and to receive from Him. It's a time where we are seeking God's help that we would be alert to the things of God, that we would be alert to what he's doing in our days. So this is our time together around some scripture, some thoughts, and some prayer. So I want to thank you uh, for joining me. Yes, you were the first. Um, and if you are able, join me to uh, bring our attention to God. So my name is Tom Griffith and uh, I'm in Boston area and I want to thank you for joining with me for this time as we consider Advent each morning I've been uh, just highlighting what the the season is really about that it's this time where we get to grow in our ability to uh, sit in anticipatory waiting before the Lord it's a kind of expectant alertness that isn't just for a season but it's to expand or to enlarge our capacity in these these levels and one way to do that is for us to uh, as best as we're able to try to find some times of solitude uh, through the week and even through the day that we can get alone for a moment and silence ourselves silence the input uh, set aside the technology, the voices, and silence even the output of our voice so that we can be still. I think of some of the scriptures that are particularly relevant. Obviously related to the stillness is um, Psalm uh, 46.10 says to be still and know that I'm God. Relax, cease from striving and know that I'm God. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know God. Or in Isaiah uh, chapter 40, verse 31, says that um, that's the one that describes that those who wait or those who hope, or as I think it's best, those who wait in hope in the Lord will renew their strength. So, this kind of waiting and stillness is filled with faith. It's a time where we're waiting and hoping in the Lord's help, in the Lord's intervention, in the Lord's wisdom. It's a season that highlights us being still and longing for the things of God in faith. It's hope for what is not yet based on what already is. It's hoped for the... Uh, greater revelation and the greater realization of the kingdom of God. It's hope for the return of Christ based on what already is, which Jesus has come. Jesus did live, die, rise again, and ascend into heaven. So it's this kind of faith that is filled with hope. And so today I'd like to look at uh, one verse, it'll take us actually more than a day. It's a verse that's very uh, popular at this time of year. It's Isaiah uh, chapter 9, verse 6. And this is, remember, Isaiah was about 500 years uh, before the time of Christ. So as you read through the book of Isaiah, or if you at this time of year hear any prophecies about him, about the virgin birth, about uh, the nature of what Jesus would be like, about the crucifixion, those prophetic words were uttered or spoken about 500 years before Jesus. But Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What I'd like to consider with you today is the thoughts that, that Jesus, that this infant who grew into a man and who was misunderstood and suffered and died and rose again, that the government 
would be upon his shoulders. Government speaks of responsibility, leadership, direction, protection. Government actually doesn't speak of provision. There's other things that, that do. Actually, provision is from the people. The government is for the, res the responsibility of, for the collective good. It's government provides leadership in direction and safety for the people. When the government is upon Jesus' shoulders, that describes the, the government of nations, the government of areas, but right now I want to consider even more specifically the government of your life, your ability to live and rule in your own life. When we come into relationship with Jesus, we're actually transferring our trust from just our own sense of self-government, which is very important, but we're uh, submitting that to the government of Jesus, that he'll take responsibility for our lives. Our lives are in his hands. Our life is hidden in him, and no one can take it away. My life is safe and secure in Jesus. He leads. He directs. The purposes of life in my life, the purposes of life for you, are in his leadership, in his direction. And he'll protect me, and he'll protect you. So you can go to places where he leads you. Sometimes it's dangerous places. But his protection, his purposes are on your life. Remember, in Jesus' life, even a couple times, people were ready to stone him. Once, I think, of a time where he, they led him to the edge of a cliff and they picked up stones to stone him. And then he just walked through the crowds. How could he do that? I think he did that because he was in submission to the Father. He wasn't walking in pride. And the Father's protection, the Father's direction, the Father's timing was upon his life. And in the same way, his protection, direction, timing, leadership, the government of your life is on Jesus' shoulders. So you can rest and be still. Not only is the government on his shoulders, but also, and this is the last one I'll highlight today, he's a wonderful counselor. See, Jesus says he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. He's made the Holy Spirit uh, more accessible, poured out among the people of God, magnified in our lives. The triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come to dwell within us, and the Holy Spirit, our paraclete, our helper, our counselor, resides within us. The Holy Spirit helps us to engage with our true identity as sons and daughters of God. He's the wonderful counselor who speaks of our identity. Our speaks into our soul of who we are and how we relate. He helps us to identify and clarify our feelings and perceptions and our own, uh, uh, not only just our perceptions, but our, um, <clears throat> how we, ah, what's the word that I want? How we, um, well, the conclusions, I'll come up with the word later, uh, the conclusions that we make based on our perceptions. We perceive, and then we interpret, I think that might have been the word I wanted, we interpret the meaning from our perceptions. And the Holy Spirit, as counselor, helps us to gain right understanding and insight into our own life and circumstances and relationships. So you have this Gov the government on Jesus' shoulders and then this incredible insight and counsel that helps us understand our own desires and brings conviction and reveals just the person of God in our lives. See, what we're celebrating is this season where we're stilling ourselves to come into great awareness of God's presence and power and purposes. And we're coming into awareness that the government of all things is on Jesus' shoulders. And the counsel, the understanding of who we are in response to God is in the Holy Spirit, in the presence of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit within us. So that when we get alone in solitude, when we silence ourselves, when we become still to know God, when we behold Him, 
when we present ourselves before him and say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening with a desire to obey. We're coming before God. Let me encourage you today to receive and to pray for God's government in your life, his influence in the lives around you, his government and leadership, direction, protection in your nation, and receive his counsel, his discernment and conviction in your, in your life. So as you agree with him, you know that you're agreeing with God. And be willing to wait and hope and long for more of the kingdom of God. That's what Advent is. That's not just Advent. That's what faith in Christ really means. Waiting, longing, presenting yourself, following. Lord, please help us. Thank you that we can ponder these things, that we can squirrel away time to be with God and deepen our lives. I pray that you would empower us with hope, empower us with a faith that we're waiting for the return of Christ. We're hoping in the resurrection. Justice is coming. The government is on your shoulders. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have an awesome day. I'll see you tomorrow somewhere around 6 o'clock. Bye-bye.